Check. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much for attending our first town hall. We really appreciate your presence here. We will begin with singing the national anthem, and we will be led by our ambassador to CARICOM, David Thomason. So please stand.
in plenty and in time of need when this fair land was young our brave forefathers sowed the seed from which our pride is sprung a pride that makes no wanton boast of what it has withstood that binds our hearts from coast to coast the pride of nationhood we loyal sons and daughters all to hereby make it known these fields and hills beyond recall are now our very own we write our names on history's page with expectations great straight guardians of our heritage firm craftsmen of our faith nice We will now take a few minutes to bow our heads and I will invite the attorney at law, member of Parliament for Christ Church South, to lead us in a brief prayer. He's looking at me, but you can say something from the heart. <laughs> we can sit or stand. Let us stand. And let us bow our heads. Dear God, help us to understand and appreciate that our presence here this evening is for a good and noble purpose. Help us to engage in constructive discussion and help us to see this project through. Amen. So much. I will now get into the introductions for the members of the Foreign Commission. I will start with to my immediate right. I have to remember which side is left or right. As you would have introduced before, Member of Parliament Ralph Thorne. He is the chairman for the Thorne Commission. And to his right, Ambassador to CARICOM David Comachon is the deputy chairman. We also have several other members who are dispersed throughout the audience, and in no particular order, these members are Adrian Donovan, Barney Gibbs, I'm not sure if they're seeing your hands, but hopefully they are, Jennifer Walker, Mohammed Ali Nana, Cheryl Hunt, Peter Skeet, Richard Carter, and Sherwood McCaskey. And I am Crystal Howell. We will now be having a brief statement by the chairman. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I understand we are being streamed. So good evening to the world that is watching us. As you are aware, the commission was launched sometime in July this year. And uh, while you may not have heard much, and when I say you, I mean the public, while you may not have heard much from us, uh, that is not to say that we were not extremely industrious in that interim period. And we have been consulting with interest groups in Barbados. We've had a consultation with the Social Justice Commission 
uh, of the Ministry of Labor. We've had a consultation with the trade unions of Barbados, and we have had a consultation as recently as last week with the permanent secretaries of Barbados. Uh, that is not, yes, and the media as well. Uh, that is not to say that the public is any less important because there is a sense in which this begins uh, what we hope to be the most active engagement with Barbados in terms of promoting the idea of local government. And we are hoping and expecting that as we traverse Barbados over the next few weeks and months, that the public of Barbados will feel that they have uh, a right and a social and moral duty to participate in these deliberations. As we've said from time to time, uh, it is one of these rare occasions when uh, government is hoping to implement a system and government comes to the public uh, for the public to craft and uh, design that system. As I've said before, it is not written in stone. We have produced, as between ourselves, a basic structure, but we are asking the public to contribute to what will be that final model uh, for local government in Barbados. Uh, let me interject and say uh, that I want to thank the media for the work that they've done over the weekend in, in, in giving publicity and giving mileage to this journey towards uh, local government in Barbados. And particularly today, uh, Mr. Eric Smith, a retired journalist of the nation, who wrote an article in today's nation and I want to say to the nation and to Mr. Smith, we really do appreciate what an article that was very, very constructive. It was an article that invited criticism, and uh, that is what we're here for. Uh, we're here to accept and to hear criticism and to build something that will endure for a long, long time to come. And so with those few words, uh, I want to welcome all of you, the members of the public, I want to welcome the world and uh, Britain and North America and Canada and the rest of the Caribbean, Barbadians who live in, in, in these parts of the diaspora. I want to welcome you to this public consultation and we look forward to very, very lively uh, discussion. We look forward to lively criticism of what we've done so far and we look forward to building something, as I said, that will endure for generations to come. Thank you very much. Before we get into the questions to the audience, I will give a brief overview of the People's Assemblies and the idea behind it for those who would not have had the advantage of hearing anything beforehand. So it would be divided amongst these different parishes and certain parishes will have one and other parishes may have more than one based on the density of the population. So it will work out to approximately 20 people's uh, assemblies with approximately 31 members each comprised of persons who would be voted for by their peers within the communities. And it would also include members of the University of the West Indies, Barbados Community College, and the Samuel Jackman Prescott Polytechnic. So it will have a mix of persons across Barbados. And we are hoping that this will be taken as a call for persons to be able to give more to their communities. We will be identifying areas across various sectors, for instance, the QEH, roads, garbage collection, etc. And you will be able to have a say as to what you think is the greatest need within your communities. And there will be a budget that will be established so that we will be able to have this direct control over what is happening, oversight as opposed to having to always generate everything through a ministry or a minister. So that's the first thing, just so persons have an idea of how it will be constructed and be able to know what it is that they're getting involved with. So I will now turn over to doing some questions for the audience. And at any point in time as well, you can feel free to ask any questions of us or the different members of the commission. Yes, the microphone is on my right. 
so you can come up to the microphone and ask any questions that you would like to. The first query would be, do you support a system of local governance? And this can go to anyone in the audience. What is your concept of the local governance and do you support it? Don't be shy. <laughs> So that was, I will go through the list of the areas that we'll be discussing so that you can decide which one you're comfortable bringing to the forum. Do you support the proposal that each assembly must be nonpartisan? And that means it should not be dominated by political agenda. Do you support the proposal for each assembly to comprise of 30 persons? What do you think should be the minimum age for members on a people's assembly? Do you support the proposal that each assembly should comprise a mix of elected private persons who live in a geographical area together with persons nominated from specific departments within the public service? Do you think that the nominated public servant should sit on the assembly in his or her capacity as a public servant or as a private citizen. Noting that each assembly may cover more than one constituency, what do you think ought to be the relationship, if any, between the people's assemblies and the parliamentary representative? Should sessions of the assembly be generally conducted in public? And finally, when would you wish to see a system of local government implemented in Barbados? I know it's a uh, multiple, but go ahead. You can please state your name. Good evening. My name is Nalita Gajada. I am here as a member of the NGO community and a person who is very interested in local government. Um, I, the first question that you, you placed had to do with whether it should be people should have level of participation with, with national politics. And I, I think that um, if we are building a constituency assembly or a people of assembly of this group of people who are being trained and exposed to looking after the needs of the community, unless we decide to change the role of the parliamentary representative, that the constituency, the, the parliamentary, the people's assembly should be seen as a gateway towards um, national representation. So I don't, I don't see, there's no, nothing bad or negative about national politics. It's how, how we utilize it, how we do it. Because it means then that the service of the parliamentarian will, ch will have to change. How they respond to the constituent will have to change because it, 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 it means a, a maybe, maybe a two-step or three-step in terms of responding to the, the people's uh, the people's assembly coming up in terms of how this how the proposal has been written so that they will get an idea of what's happening within the constituency as well, thereby providing more time for the elected representative to perform their roles in different ways. Just, just, that's just a thought. Uh, um, a little, uh, let, us, let us engage, uh, you know. You want to engage yeah, me? No, you stay, yes, yes. Uh, this is what the exercise is all about. Okay. We want to engage with the public all right. uh, so that we move from one idea develops into a greater idea. Okay. Uh, now, we have uh, proposed St. Michael, for example, to divide St. Michael into four assemblies. And I want to answer Eric today. Eric asks, why 30? Uh, to explain to Eric, it is not constituency-based. We are trying to avoid the connotation of constituency because when you say constituency, people see it 
purely as being partisan and political. And therefore, uh, we have proposed that St. Michael should be divided into four assemblies. Uh, you've raised the question of the parliamentary representative. Uh, if I'm not being unfair to you, I want to ask you, do you think there should be a relationship between the parliamentary representative for that area and the People's Assembly? Or in, in your proposal later down in the document, you do suggest that there, is, that there should be uh, some relationship where, that, where you propose that there should be an invitation to the parliamentary representative to come and hear the concerns of the, of the People's Assembly. So in your proposal yourself, you do accept that, that there needs to be a relationship, but it has to be a relationship where the, the, the commission, or I keep saying the commission, the assembly, assembly, where the assembly has a specific d definition of its power. Mm -hmm. Because um, having sat before on other attempts at people's representative or constituency councils or whatever they were framed, there was, there was a lot of um, you didn't have that, 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 what's the right word, David? Sorry? You didn't have that sense of autonomy, David, that's right. In terms of de deciding on what were the programs that you should be able to, to follow through on, or even whether the parliamentary representatives should come and speak to you if, if you're not ready to be spoken to. Mm -hmm. So there I, needed to be a different relationship. Could I say that our concept is that the People's Assembly should be autonomous. Um, no government official should be appointing uh, members of the, the, the People's Assembly. No government minister, that is. And it should really, the People's Assembly should really control its own affairs. But there are three functions where we do envisage the People's Assembly having an engagement or relationship with the member of parliament for the assembly area. And the three of them are as follows. One, the community well-being teams. We envisage the People's Assembly taking responsibility for putting together a team that ensures that nobody falls through the proverbial crack cracks in the assembly area and we see the community well-being team having liaising with the member of parliament for the area. Um, secondly, um, the community forum because we envisage that the people's assembly will at least once a quarter stage a community forum where members of the community come together to discuss national affairs but most importantly bills that are pending before parliament or about to go before parliament and this is where we say that the um, we propose that the member parliament should be part of that community forum dis discussion of national affairs and parliamentary affairs and then thirdly we s we propose that the people's assembly should um, be involved in government development planning for the assembly area. So for example, the People's Assembly should have a role in saying to government, look, our assembly area needs roads, road repairs, public housing, health clinics, jobs for the unemployed, sporting or recreational facilities. And of course, the, that's, that's, um, that's an area of interest to the parliamentary representative as well. So, you know, in, the way the system works now, it is a parliamentary representative that takes responsibility for saying, we need, I have unemployed people in my constituency, we need jobs or, or we need um, a, a health clinic in this area. But we are saying, we are seeing a role for the People's Assembly in actually representing the needs of its assembly area. But of course, that would be a function that- I, I I agree with that. The only thing in, in the proposal that I was not quite comfortable with, with you, you're, you're talking about developing a, a chairman caucus, a chairmanship caucus, where, where the, the assemblies are meeting with the chairman of each, the chairman's caucus 
is a meeting of the chairman of each assembly. Yes. And I said at the very beginning, you said you were dealing with parishes. And the only reason that a parish will have four assemblies is because of the population. population yeah. So I believe that somewhere in there, there should be a structure that allows for the parish, that those four meetings, those four assemblies mm -hmm. to come together so that you have one projection coming from the parish in terms of the parish's development. Or else you could easily get one part. Like Bridgetown, St. Michael, we could develop a whole area of St. Michael, but we don't see what's happening down in Mason Hall Street because they don't have voice. So I think that, 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 is a, that we need to insert some structure in there where the assemblies meet at the, at the parish level and, at the, and then one of them from each parish then goes up and be part of the chairman caucus that will then represent the interest of that, that parish. I have a lot more, but I'm gonna sit down, no, please. please. We, we interrupted you, Nalita, so please continue. No, uh, but, but I was just ask, answering that one question. I think the, the one that stuck out, though, that I had a little bit of concern about was the, the town planning, town and country planning. In what respects? Oh, dear. What page? Town and country planning. It is on the page six. And how it read, I'm not sure, as I was telling my colleagues earlier this afternoon, I'm not sure if that is um, lawyer legalese language. I didn't like, could henceforth be required to consult. And I felt that that needed to be softer, but more about a relationship built between the town and country planning and the role, and include in the role of the People's Assembly to call they themselves to call, convene a town, uh, a town hall meeting to discuss any development. Because you still do not want to take away the power from the town and country planning department because they have the, they have the expertise. They're supposed to have the expertise in terms of what, what planning should be. But we are going to, the, the, the People's Assembly is going to be concerned with the, what's happening in their assembly, so they want to discuss it to make sure that they're not disadvantaged by any planning or development planning that's in for the area. So I thought that I, that I think I think we're on, the same, we're on the same track, you know. Because mm -hmm. uh, we're not saying that the assembly substitutes itself or can instruct the town and country planning department. All we're saying is that there's certain development applications for development projects that may have implications for things that traditionally are very precious to, to the community. Maybe access to the beach, for example, or some of the beautiful views and scenery of the Barbadian landscape. And so all, what we are proposing is that there probably be a class of applications for projects that would um, trigger a consultation, trigger the town and country planning level. department having to consult with the People's Assembly, not to, not to be guided by the People's Assembly, but to at least hear the views of the People's Assembly and take those views into consideration. I, I, uh, I'm going to push though, because if you're that, now if you're looking for environmental assessment and so on, you now have to start looking as well at a gender assessment, which is what is missing from this entire document as well. The whole issue of gender and how how gender should be looked at within within the people assembly, and it's not just a matter of numbers, not just a matter of numbers, but a matter of people representing specific interests of specific groups in the, in the society that they're not penalized. You want to make a proposal? Not, yet. not, not yet, sir. My, my evening was just, I, my, the last evening I will. But I do want to, the, my final comment has to do with how you have allocated the membership of the, of the, of the assembly. You have 
in terms of the, the 10 from university and the five from SJPP and the, you know, if you're, if you're creating a situation where you are making space for people, you need to be making space for the most marginalized. That means the SJPP people who don't necessarily have voice, they should be getting the 10. And the, S and the Barbados Community College, they should be getting the 10. The UE people, they know how to articulate. And if you have a, a age structure right, they can, they can get on the committee, they can get and represent that group without, without giving them a higher status in society or in the grouping on the commission. But that's just my, that's my learning from David, being, being a socialist. I, I just wanted to respond to the point on the town planning business and to say to you that uh, already in Barbados, these things do happen. You do have uh, people coming together to challenge developers. Mm -hmm. uh, a few months ago, there was a meeting at Accra uh, uh, in which the developer was challenged by a very, very, uh, I don't want to say aggressive, but a very lively audience uh, tomorrow night. There is also a town hall meeting, I think, Adrian, uh, in relation to the proposal for the expansion of the sewage plant. So the point I'm making is that these consultations already occur in Barbados. Mm -hmm. And it is really David's proposal. I don't mind saying mm -hmm. that. And he doesn't mind that I say it mm -hmm. publicly. Uh, these things already happen. Mm -hmm. But he just feels, and we just feel, in agreeing with him, that these matters could be formalized. Because if you're going to have a development in a locality, the people who live in that locality have a, have a right and an interest. I and agree. To express, to I agree. Themselves. I thought, like I started out by saying, I think it's just the language that yes. kind of like sparked me out. But the intent, I, I agree with the intent. Thank you. There's nothing you wrong with the intent. Thank you very much. And feel free to return to us. Now, Lisa, just to make the point that the numbers that were distributed between um, the university versus the Polytechnic and BCC were, um, those numbers were based on number of students. So for example, UE would have maybe, it used to have about 8,000 8, students versus the Polytechnic and um, BCC that has a much, have much smaller um, numbers of students. So it was just based on trying to reflect um, the numerical balance between the institutions. Yeah, but there are other issues besides the numerical that we should be concerned with as well, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to make an input? Debbie can come forward. Good night, everyone. Deborah Grant. I am here as a regular Barbadian. A few weeks or months ago, and reflecting on all that was happening in the world, I realized a lot of our issues came as a result of partisan thought processes. And therefore, looking to my country, a lot of the development, a lot of things that can happen for our country is being hampered, in my mind, by partisan concepts. So when I heard about this, which is only recently, and I'm surprised, I'm probably thinking that I have too much in my head and I probably missed the first set when it was announced. But when I saw that this was happening, I was really excited and I was I have to be there. What was sad, however, is when I started to engage other persons to ask, are you going to be here? Because here's an excellent opportunity. Everyone asks, what is it about? I just got this document and I feel a bit um, disadvantaged because I haven't had a chance to read it before I got here to make a real informed um, contribution from this document. But what I would like to you, one of the questions you asked was what we think about the nonpartisan concept. I love that. How is it going to be achieved in an environment, however, that is so heavily thought, directed, everything on the long of partisan line? I, I don't have the solution for that, but I am hoping that we'll be able to find persons who can sit in an objective way on this. 
while I'm on there, just let me add that quickly, as soon as I saw it, I thought, what was the difference between this and the constituency councils? But again, I haven't had a chance to read it, but from what I've heard so far engaged, it seemed to be a lot more in depth and a bit more accountability and that type of stuff. So I believe that thought, but I just wanted to be honest and bring that to the table. The other th question was, one of the other questions you asked was, how soon would you want it to start? I would say last year, maybe, five <laughs> years ago. And part of that is because we talk a lot and I'm really tired. Yeah. I, I, attended an, I attended something recently where the creatives, and I hope I'm not, I, but I just have to be honest right now, I'm sorry. I attended an opportunity where the creatives were asked to come and give their views <laughs> so that we can move forward uh, what we need and that type of stuff. And it was, I think, from 9 to 12. And from 9 to 11, 30, it was persons up there talking to us. And then we had rush through of 15 minutes to give our thoughts. Action is what we need and change mindsets as well. So for this to work, we also need to change the mindsets of the persons in the areas that may, will make a difference. Because it's okay for me to come in representing my constituency, thanks for coming into my district. This is my heart, so thank you for making this the first. Um, but we could come up with all the ideas. Smart, smart week just happened. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, yes, we're gonna do this, we're gonna have civ tech, we're gonna make changes, we're going to look and see what we need as a country and go after it. And then I heard the technocrats and the people who actually do the work say how it cannot work. So we need to get to action, but we have to change the mindsets in order to get there. I don't expect you to have the solutions, but I'm hoping that when we speak that those persons who have that type of mind and recognize that it's not partisan may be willing to come forward and be part of the process. And I think that's it for now. If I have anything else, I'll come back. In relation to the first part of your statement, that was a large concern for myself as well. No, I'm trying hard not to offend anyone who is involved in politics. But for me personally, it's mm -hmm. not about whether I am B, D, A, B, or C. It is about what is supposed to be best for the country. Exactly. So I have had some consultation with persons from Trinidad because their assembly, is particularly in Tobago, is working very well. Mm -hmm. But initially they said that they did have a lot of the politics involved because persons from the parties that they would have favored would have brought their persons in, had persons voting for them, had them with the agenda. But that is something that I would love to have avoided if possible because then that cements in person's mind mm -hmm. that it is a political thing and it isn't something that is nonpartisan as we are trying to push. So it really and truly, as he indicated, it depends very heavily on the person's willingness to volunteer for these communities to step forward and step up and say, I see these things happening in my community. I would like to make a change. I'm going mm -hmm. to step forward and see if I can make a difference. And having persons like yourself encourage others to come out and be able to give back through these volunteer programs and communities and assemblies. So that is my hope and push. It will also be on our part as well to make sure that we try to identify and minimize any instances where it seems as though party is favoring over what the real and genuine needs of the communities are. So that will also be on us to make sure that we can manage that. But again, because it is something that is for the people, mm -hmm. we cannot dictate right. who is going to be elected, who is going to be, in, you know. So yeah, it's very much dependent on the people. Mm -hmm. If persons who are politically minded are the ones that step forward, Unfortunately, that is how it's going to be. The, the question I would like us all to ask ourselves at the end of the day when presented with a situation, is, my, is, is what I'm about to do going to benefit the country? Is it going to benefit the community? Is it going to benefit my family? Mm -hmm. Is it going to benefit, and it's not just a case of for me, 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 making me bigger, better, whatever. 
but at the end of the day, is it for the betterment of the community and the country? Because as I read somewhere today, all of these people have gone. Barbados is still here. So at the end of the day, we need to preserve and look after Barbados. And it, the system has worked very well for Tobago because they are like a town unto themselves and able to make a lot of decisions for themselves right. that benefits them as a community and they're almost separate right. from everything else. <laughs> so their example and model works very well and I'm hoping that Barbados can recognize and take the best examples from persons who've already gone through this process and see how it can work for us. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Debbie. Debbie, I Debbie. just wanted sorry, to sorry. say, in, in addition to uh, mm -hmm. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of social, and, and you've highlighted the point that a lot of social relationships are, are made awkward by, by partisan mm -hmm. considerations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, people, I, I use the word made awkward, people feel uncomfortable uh, yes. with when partisan politics uh, infects the mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we wish to avoid because we're, we're uh, implementing here a social administration, an administration mm -hmm. of persons who live in a particular locality. Mm -hmm. And we feel that uh, it, it would not be a good thing for that assembly, for that community, if partisan politics should infect it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are proposing, therefore, that you, cannot, um, that you cannot sit on an assembly as a BLP or DLP or whatever is the name of the party. Right. That you must come in your own right, with your right. own personal integrity. Right. And as I've said before, we, we, uh, partisan politics creates discomfort among next door neighbors, yes. among streets sometimes. Yes. We wish to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to look back too much, mm -hmm. but in the past, we've had assemblies or councils, so-called, right. being appointed by a minister. Yeah. And that gave it a partisan color mm -hmm. immediately. This, we propose, will be done by election. Mm -hmm. Your neighbors, will elect you into office. Mm -hmm. And the now, Electoral I, I, and Boundaries Commission is going yes, to be involved. Yes, uh, done I didn't under hear that, the aegis Crystal, sorry. of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission. So it will be a free and fair election mm -hmm. to the People's Assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, I've said last week, and I'll say again, Debbie, uh, we would be naive to believe that political parties will not, will not exploit it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm, look, look, we're adults here. I am sure political parties will try to exploit the system. Yes. But that is one of the hazards, mm -hmm. yes? Uh, but we want to make a pure start, as David is saying, make every safeguard that local government is pure, that local government is designed mm -hmm. pure, to enhance the community in a very real and meaningful way. So our proposal is that political parties will not participate in the process as political parties. Yes, that is our proposal. This just came to mind, could yes. be completely off, but maybe there need to be some penalty enforced if there's any proof that there's been interference on a partisan level. But hey, that just came I and I did not think it through. I don't think we could I go just, that far. I just said it and maybe someone can, it can um, regenerate another thought that may address that challenge. But it, no, it, it, the, the thing about this partisan is that it prevents some people, because for example, I, in the past, I've wanted to serve my community. Mm -hmm. And I will come out and do things with my community. Mm -hmm. But because of my surname, I will sign, I'm assigned to a party. So I was no longer serving or wanting to serve as such because of my surname. Yeah. Now when the con yeah. constituency council started, I attended one of the meetings and in sharing, I recognized that I was again probably being ignored because the word around the room was that is my, this is the surname and therefore she is this particular. So it was not about my community anymore. It was about a party I, that by, I'm not a member I of just, any party. I just want to say that <laughs> your suggestion is something that needs to be looked at because the truth is um, if a political party um, intervenes illicitly it is corrupting something that exactly. is really for the benefit exactly. of, of, of the people in the country. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of some kind of penalty mm -hmm. um, is something that I think we should think about. We Good. should think about it. I, so we, I, you know, we are, all the contributions tonight uh, are being recorded. Okay. The ideas, the suggestions are being noted. And because this, this is the whole idea of this, um, the commission. What we have is just a proposal. Mm -hmm. 
So we want to get feedback. We want to get alternative ideas. We want to get new ideas. And the, at the end of the day, at the end of the process, the commission will go through all mm -hmm. that we have heard from our people mm -hmm. and um, taking everything into consideration will make a final recommendation mm -hmm. to the cabinet of Barbados. Right. And then it will be for cabinet to exercise their own um, independent judgment and, and put the final product um, into law. Okay. So we thank you for that, thank you. For that suggestion. Come to the mic. Good evening, Maureen Pollard. Just a short observation, a quick question as it relates to the composition of youth. Um, I just wondered if there was any particular reason why you just focus on educational institutions and not youth organizations. For example, you have people who are um, youth ambassadors you have the Environmental Youth Network, I think they're called. You also would have people like the Rotary who have youth arms, the Kiwanis who have youth arms. And I was wondering if it wouldn't have been more balanced to also have representation from some of those bodies because they will come with enough of knowledge and research on issues affecting young people. So I just wanted to make that suggestion. Thank you. The persons that would be in those organizations would still very likely come under, especially if they're still at secondary school age, they'll still be at secondary school or at some institution where they're gaining educational opportunities. When we focus then on all of the different youth-based organizations, it then waters down sometimes the effort to be able to identify everyone and you run the risk of leaving someone out not saying that it can't be taken into consideration in terms of making sure particular groups are aware of the information and the opportunities to be able to come and participate, but we would very likely be able to capture much more of the younger persons if we go the route of the school and the educational systems as opposed to the youth groups or to focus on the youth groups in particular. But it's not something uh, that. Maureen, can could be I ask you a question? Yeah, I was, I was okay, sure. Could I, I ask was, you, you could answer her, but could I ask yeah. you, what would be your recommendation for the lower age limit mm -hmm. for an assembly, uh, assembly man or assembly, assembly uh, member? Mm -hmm. right. and, and bearing in mind that youth could also put themselves up for election. Mm -hmm in the community. Yeah. So could you maybe give us some advice on what kind of age right. limit we should be looking at? Right, first of all, I thought you were assuming the, what would be like the UN definition of youth, which will take us right up to 35. Mm -hmm. And you, I said, first of all, I'm assuming that you're using the standard UN definition of youth, which would take us right up to 35. We're going to both your, your so issues. Still youth. And we are going as low, uh, right, I know you want to hire, but I meant for what she said. And also you can go as low, usually it's 16 to 35. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to make an exception and go any lower, but usually it's 16 to 35. Um, what um, I was saying though, it, it doesn't follow that everybody who is youth is, at, is currently enrolled in an educational institution. So that's also the thing where, where I talked about the organizations that there are some key organizations that you might want to involve, especially when you're talking about things like the town planning, situations like the youth, the environmental youth group is one I thought is an obvious one that you might want to engage because they do quite a bit of, of activity and they're advocates for what needs to happen that it relates to protecting the environment. So when I suggested the group, I didn't think you would go to um, Mr. Skeet and get all 130 <laughs> youth organizations, but I think you could strategically put it, and I said the service organizations as well, because they have hierarchy, so you only have to say, you want one representative from Rotaract, one from the Key Club, you know, and they have a body that has structure, or one from cadets, that's the youth, and I think. GCI so you may not get those people when you just go to the schools, and whereas they have a lot, they, they are responsible for a big group of, of young people, and if you want to have that reach, I think you should look at involving some of the, the key organizations. And I think, as I said, don't go too much lower than 16, that so you have that issue. I think that you, you can get a lot if you look at some of the key organizations. And you just, 
had the new, um, the one used to be youth service. So you should be looking to have a representative from that organization as well. So by doing limited it to the schools, you might be missing people who might be able to make a very valuable contribution. Thank you. <laughs> Who is going to get to the mic first? <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, Head Table. My name is Buddy Laria, and it's the first time that I've uh, seen this paper, so I have not had a chance to read it. Uh, I was looking and I asked my colleague here if the word disability is mentioned in it, because I know that's a, a group that, that's a group that the word disability should be in here somewhere. Now, I say that because I was one of the first members elected to the Christchurch South Constituency Council. And the Constituency Council, we know it was partisan. And I was seen as a BLP. So I had a very hard time in the constituency. Uh, but my main interest is based on this. I came back to Barbados from England where there's local government and people lobby for what they want. In Barbados, the community do not lobby. I learned that very quickly. But what I found out when I came back, I was on holiday in 1991, and I wanted to vote. This would have been my first time voting in Barbados. And I went in the constituency uh, voting booth, and I was disadvantaged. Coming from England, where we as, let's say Caribbean black people, we didn't pay much attention to who was running. We paid attention to the party. So most of us vote labor. So when I went to vote, I didn't pay attention to who was running. I wanted to vote for a particular party. When I got in, no party was on the ballot paper. And therefore, I didn't know who to vote for. So I had a problem. And I missed my opportunity to vote in Barbados for the first time in 1991. I immediately took it upon myself to write to all the political parties and the Electoral Boundary Commission to say that something is fundamentally wrong. Because if I can read, but I was disadvantaged, what about the person who could not read or cannot read? How are they going to cast their vote? They would have to inform someone that they want to vote for a particular person and ask that person to put the X next to the name. Now we know how it works, that some people will not put the X where the person wants it. But it, it must be very embarrassing for a person who cannot read to have to inform someone that they cannot read and ask that person to help them to vote. Uh, buddy, um, just um, as a matter of information, well, in, in this system of local governance, we are not envisaging anybody representing political parties, period. 
But we do envisage that people who put themselves up as candidates for election to a people's assembly, first of all, they'll be doing so as individuals, but we envisage an electoral process under the auspices of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission where the CV or the bio of every candidate will be published and there will be one, at, at least one community meeting um, organized by the Electoral and Boundaries Commission where, where the candidates will be able to come and speak to their, the would-be the would be electors, speak to the people of their community um, to, make, to make their elections pitch why they should be elected. We don't envisage we envisage that that will be the be-all and end-all of, of campaigning. So we, we are not envisaging individuals having you know, political campaigns and, and um, going out there and holding public meetings and, and putting up posters and all of that. So we, but you know, everything is up for discussion, but the way we are seeing it is that the Electoral and Boundaries Commission controls the process. You come forward as an individual, representing not only political part, but no institution. You're representing no institution, you're an individual, and the electoral process is restricted to your bio being published and you having an opportunity to make your pitch at um, a public meeting to your fellow uh, residents. Uh, but can I ask you, as, as a guide for us, and can we draw on your experience in England? What did the local government do? What did do? Yes, what, what the, the functions? Uh, well, similar to what you're proposing, take responsibility. The, 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 the concept is ideal. It's local okay. government. I, I, I fully support it. I was just okay. making the point that there's some people that might be disadvantaged. And mm -hmm. since we don't want to leave no one mm -hmm. out of, mm -hmm. no one should fall through the proverbial crap. We definitely take that into How consideration. How we are going to address certain things. Mm -hmm. Because, and I, I want you to hear this. After 1991, I went back to England. And I informed Barbadians of what was happening in Barbados. And in 1994, I came back to Barbados and I ran as a candidate in the election to make my point. And for, from 1994 to 2018, I have been advocating for change. Is local government something you would participate in, buddy, here? Well, I like the idea, the concept. Yes. I don't know if I would be part of it. I, I don't know, that's up in the air. Okay. Because I have some other priorities which mm -hmm. might take me out of Barbados right. for a long period but of you're time. you're fully supportive of the oh, idea. Oh, fully supportive. Thank you. Thank you so I, I support it, but what I'm saying is that there is some outstanding issues mm -hmm. that when it starts, one should be able in the communities to help those people who are struggling. Because I can tell you this, up to today, up to today, mm -hmm. at the beach, and I'm very vocal about the change that needs to take place, people do not believe that this is going to be any different than the Constituency Council. I'm trying to convince them that it's not going to be the same as the Constituency Council. Mm -hmm. People want to know, does it make sense? I know the work that I am going to have to do, not only here in Barbados, but in England, to convince Barbadians that there is a change in Barbados within the politic and within local government. So I welcome the idea and will give it my full support. As Thank I said, you, buddy. I would want to make sure that the disabled is 
mm -hmm. adequately represented in we definitely appreciate the input, especially with regards to those who are differently able. We would definitely want to make sure that they're included because their voice is as important as anyone else's. So we appreciate your contribution. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, there was a young a lady, and then you can go next. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Anne Marie Burke Brewster. And recently, my political representative sent out um, a notice. It was a matter to deal with sanitation. And while I responded, I was thinking maybe local government could deal with this, considering how much a political representative has to do. Um, in terms of it being political, people's perception is their reality. Whatever you do, persons elected will be seen, you know, that way. You, you may not be able to get away from that. But the focus has to remain, and I really want to commend the commission for try, trying to bring it forward. My concern, however, is that I hear a lot about groups. I think that person should be free and can need to be free to put up their, themselves for service, not bring it down to groups, um, service organizations, because you don't really want to keep out those that you're trying to get in. The youth, the differently able, uh, representative for the elderly, um, those on the block, um, those are the people you need to try and get in. I think the age should start at 18. 18. That, I think the age should start at 18 and up. Um, you mentioned a question about, one of your questions about having public servants involved. Mm -hmm. I can say I'm a public servant. I would hate for local governments to get caught up in bureaucracy. When you're at the community level, you want to pitch an idea, pitch concerns, and have them actioned. When you hear public service, you hear bureaucracy. I, I am very sorry. So I don't want us to get bobbed down in public servants being on it. If somebody comes and offering themselves and they end up to be a public servant, fine. We asked that question because there was some concern that public servants should not be able to be on the community councils because of their role within government. But I, then you're leaving out an entire sector of Barbados from exactly, having a Exactly, because the public servant employs quite a majority. Yeah. Um, there was something else I, I wanted to mention. I just <laughs> lost my, my train of thought. But I think it's a very good idea. Um, and I am looking forward to it. I am glad it's being finally actioned because I've been looking forward to it for years. And if I remember my train of thought, I, I, I would come you back. You can always come back to the mic. Okay, That's thank you. That's fine. <laughs> when you're looking at gender, yeah. mm -hmm. please look at gender role in the society. It can't be half male and it can't be female, half female. You have to look at role, their roles in the society, what affects who, etc. That's That's my only concern. While, while Richard is coming to the mic, Anne-Marie, uh, the whole idea was uh, that public servants should sit together with the private citizen and to bring their knowledge and their expertise to the whole activity. Uh, let's say Sanitation Service Authority, for example, if the local assembly is in negotiation with the SSA, we thought that it would have been useful to have a public servant from the SSA sit on the body to make things easier. Uh, so, so that's the whole idea. Why can't, why can't that same public servant just be used for consultation purposes? That's, why that's do they option. have to be part of the council as a public servant? Uh, perhaps, perhaps we felt that if you formalized the relationship that you were likely to get results, but we appreciate your comment as to bureaucracy. It's, it's, a, very, it's, a, very good, it's a very good point. Madam Chair, um, my name is Richard Carter. I'm a member of the Commission 
And um, I just wanted to speak on one point as a point of information because this is really the opportunity to hear from the persons gathered here. Um, a question was asked earlier about the definition of youth. Um, and just as a point of information and accuracy, the UN definition of youth is 15 to 24. The Commonwealth definition of youth is 15 to 29. So those are the two um, internationally used definitions of youth um, that have currency basically internationally. And as to the um, not being defensive or anything, but um, many people would know that I serve as a former director of Youth Affairs and therefore would be very much interested in promoting youth involvement in something like this. Um, as to the lower age limit, um, I just ask persons to reflect that one of the most powerful voices at the UN in the recent consultations on climate change was a 15-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for uh, Richard, your Richard, have, having, regard, having uh, regard to the context of the times in Barbados, uh, what, what designation would you propose? I'm very reluctant to propose something <laughs> because I'm a member of the commission um, okay. and our duty is to hear from persons. Okay. But, um, but I would say, however, that um, the, the consideration of 18, because it is the age at, uh, of majority and the age yes. at which you are eligible to vote, mm -hmm. um, that should be further from our minds than the capacity of a person to make a contribution to matters that impact on their own lives mm -hmm. at the community level and we need if we are promoting student councils in secondary schools and even in primary schools we need to give young people the space and the uh, capacity to represent their own interests in fora such as this um, as to the the lower limit i would leave that basically to the population of barbados to decide but i would suggest that it should not be constrained by any age of majority thank you Thank you for your definition that has removed me from the category of youth. <laughs> I was feeling better before, but go to, I, I know, right? <laughs> I just want to add quickly my voice to the age. I like 15, younger even, if possible, because we have a lot of bright young people out there with the right mindset to make a difference now and not having to wait until they're 20 or whatever. And they should be part of that engagement because it's really their country that they're, they're setting the groundwork for. So I just want to add my voice to that age. I agree as well too, and it helps if they're involved in things like this, they can also use it as mentorship opportunities and to be able to get a sense of culture from and patriotism from a young age as well too. Welcome to the mic. Thank you, good night. My name is Destry, and I have an observation rather than a question. And while I know that this is the first town hall meeting of four, I'm probably, with the exception of the young man to my left, Just one, one of the youngest. It's, it's gonna be much, many more than four. I know there are four, there are more than four. Okay, so that answers four. my question. That answers one of the questions that I have. Well, it was an observation. But what I would like to suggest that the Commission do is have these meetings at the level that young people operate on, which is social media. And perhaps when you are disseminating information for the other set of town hall meetings, one or two of them perhaps could be meetings that are held online where young people don't have to leave home to attend because they're not going to come out on a Wednesday night to a school hall at seven o'clock to a meet meeting, but you want to have their involvement. Otherwise, you're going to have PAs that are going to be constituted the way this room is built. Thank you very much for that contribution. I definitely appreciate it. I will at this point like to invite persons to like the Thorn Commission Facebook page where you will find the live stream for the town hall that we're having tonight as well as the ones that are to come and to make it clear that these first four are the initial four but if we wanted to wait until every single venue and everything else was organized we may never start 
So that is why we decided to start with the initial four, and as we have more details confirmed, more will come out. But yes, I did advocate because even though I'm not young people anymore, I am still part of the lazy generation that would prefer to stay home in my very warm bed and listen to what's happening at the town hall and still be able to make a contribution without having to come out. So we definitely do appreciate. Yeah, yes, it's been shared on the Facebook page, so people will still be able to make contributions in any comments that would be seen on the YouTube stream or the Facebook page. We will also take those into consideration. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Good night. I'm Nicole Howell, and um, I am, let's see, I like what it seems to be, and I'm hoping that it's not just a talk shop. And beyond this, I would like to say that if we are going to action this and we are going to see change, I'm going to make a bold proposal as to say, dissolve the parties all together and let's make a better Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> that is my hope. Because then we won't have any Bs or Ds and at the end of the day, my country will survive. I find that the only people that suffer are the voters. And we need to come together and work better for our country. Now, as we go on, I want to take um, the first page, and I'm going to just go through the, I would have gone on a little chance to go through the proposal, and I'm just going to just highlight some issues here that, you know, I'm a public servant as well, but I'm more so a... Uh, a Barbadian that really love my country and would like to see the best for my country. And so I really want you to take my proposal at heart because if you are really looking at actioning this, I want to go past these people's assemblies. And as the lady rightly said, and if you are really taking note, when people are, are choose to be in groups or group leaders, we are going to have these people getting their people to come and vote for them to, to lead. And so we've gone back into segregating the whole issue instead of dealing with the issues that really need to be addressed. So here it is. We are going to act three, take active measures to ensure that high standards are always upheld in our national public service. I am very disappointed at what's happening in public service right now, and I have made that very vocal on Facebook. People are being penalized, and another thing that I would like to see is that people not marginalized based on who they are, who they are connected to, so long as you're Beijing and you're black and you rather white or black and you're Beijing, you have a right to contribute without being victimized or anything like that. And without people taking it as an insult or a criticism or something that they would want to lash back at you for. And so I would like to see regarding that, high standards are always upheld in the national public service. I want to deal with that. And I think that the whole system in the, in the service needs dismantling. We have leaders that are very, very unfair, that are penalizing people unre un unreasonably, and they are never penalized. I'm going to go down to four. More readily contribute our creativity, intelligence, and energy to the administration of the public affairs of our country. And so at the end of the day, I'm going to come back to the point that I think that whether public servant or not should be able to contribute to the betterment of this country, right? I don't want to, uh, there's no, <laughs> let me compose myself, there's no um, avenue for public servants to deal with issues in this country. You can't go online, you can't go on, on the media, you shouldn't write in the paper. So then the public servants are at the mercy of leaders who can be unethical at the same time. This needs addressing. I'm going to go on. I'm at um, seven, participate in collective decision-making and administrative activities that are designed to foster a healthy sense of social and national unity. And so this is my, my um, I'm hoping that we all can collectively participate in the decision-making. And it's not only political people who know polit politicians and stuff like that, but that we all can take part in it. Yeah, um, regarding the, as I, 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 I think I'm going to stop here. I saw Mr. Kamishon making a note. I'm sure he would want to ask me a question or two. I have no problem on that. But 
I want to come back to the point to say that there are no standards, and we need to have standards within this society. Um, in order for us to see a better Barbados, you know, I'm putting you all to task, and I want to see that. As, as I said, before anybody spoke, this is another constituency council, just called a different name. What really is it? Are we going to really action what we are going to talk about here and see it be put into place, or is this another talk shop? That's me. Thank you. Okay. No, th thanks for the comment. Um, I made um, a note with um, Ralph Thorne that you're quite right about um, the public service and that we, as a country, it, I mean, this is not a matter for our local government system, but as a country, we need to do some rethinking about what a, what a public service should look like in this 21st century and how we might need to you know, redesign the role of the public servant in this, in this current era. So I, I think that's something the country needs to do some, some thinking about because we still have the basic structure from the old colonial period. You know, and, um, and, and you probably even, need to think about it some more. Yes, but, I, but that wouldn't be so much for this level of, of our, our governance. But I think that's a national conversation that we're going to need to have. But then the people's, let me just get the name, the people's assembly is supposed to deal with the in overall national development, correct? Yeah, well, yes, because okay. the people's assembly, it is envisaged that at least once a quarter, we will come together in community forums to address national issues. So yes, you're quite right. Out of the People's Assembly could come proposals for the reform of the public service, for example. So we are, in fact, we are even proposing that the, the rules and regulations of Parliament be amended to make it obligatory for the House of Assembly and the Senate to consider recommendations coming up to them from the people's assemblies. Of course, we can't, we can't tie their hands, but the regulations could, could, could make it possible for the people's assembly to feed um, recommendations and proposals into the parliament for consideration and hopefully action. So yes, um, out of community forums, ideas for the reform of the public sector or any other sector for that matter um, could come forward. Yes, and definitely for the private sector to be better because for me, what I'm doing is challenging every Barbadian to do their part. Now, for me, I am a real, like, for me, if my gap needs the grass cutting along the area or hedge coming over from um, persons who are not on the, in the, in the, that have property that are not looking after it, I go and I cut it. I go and I remove it. It's my gap, right? If all of us would take the sense of responsibility and realize that we are the owners or the persons who live in Barbados and contribute, then at the end of the day, I think we will make it better. So I just want to, to um, just encourage everyone, and I would really like to dissolve the whole part of Thing, and just that's we're on enhancing Barbados. Yes? Thank you. Thank Nic you. Nic he wants yes. to say something yes. to me. Nicole, uh, we want you to feel entitled to make your proposals towards what we are doing here. Uh, that's, that's why we are here. Uh, you are sounding as if we have come to you with something that is finished. It's not finished. Realize, and, and but we want as I you said, to make proposals. I'm hoping that we come to a completion where we activate it because we've had a lot of talk shots over the years. And from my short space of time, where I still think that I'm young, um, yeah. <laughs> Crystal, <laughs> although I don't fit in that category. We can, talk, we can do it, Richard, later. <laughs> but I still think that I'm young. And after different um, parties come and go and leave us, like, you know, I am a bit disillusioned. And I would like to see action happening. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Look, you, you, made, you made a comment about um, the roadways that are... I see it every day. And you get a sense that if you want the public roadways cleaned, that it is a long process towards whoever is responsible for doing it. Uh, people come to us as parliamentary representatives. 
uh, they don't know the road towards the person whose responsibility it is to do it. And I think that this is the perfect opportunity, and that's why I asked Buddy Larry, what did the councils in England do? Because you go to these countries, you go to North America, you go to England, and public spaces are pristine, they're clean. And sometimes I ask who maintains them, and, I, and I'm told local government. And I think we need to duplicate that system in Barbados, in which the local, the person in the community has direct responsibility for keeping his public spaces clean. Yes, but the thing is, is that if, if political parties keep on making people think that they are gods, and that everybody has to come to them for handouts, that's where we will keep getting ourselves in trouble. But this is the reason yes. why these assemblies are so important because yes. these things have been used as tools to be seen as favors when uh, it is time for elections. And it's impossible you all sometimes. of a sudden see things being done and uh, it's supposed to be an incentive. However, if that power is taken out and then and this is given to the people, then it puts a sharper focus on the role of your parliamentary representative and how they are focusing on getting the country as a whole as opposed to using these things as any form or perception as a, of a favor. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Nalita, no come Nalita, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Minister Ford and whose ministry all this is being done. Minister Ford, we acknowledge your presence. Thank you for entertaining me again. I wanted, um, when I looked at um, the oversight of government agencies, you were looking at a number of institutions, the hospital, and so on. I wondered if you could include, or if there's a way that you could look at including the judicial system. Judicial. The judicial system. <laughs> and you also want to possibly look at the paying special attention to youth incarceration. Mm. Uh, I think that that, that is, that is an issue that we need to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. I'm also looking at the finance section, how you are gonna finance the, the people's Assembly. assemblies. And you read the estimates and budgets to be divided equally among the people's assemblies and um, they're getting financial allocations from central government. I don't think that that, it sounds fair, but there's no equity. <laughs> if, I, if I have two children, one real, real, real bright, and one needing skills, and I put my money to give both of them lessons, what happens? The one that bright, 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 get real bright. And the one that ain't bright at the same level. So I think that we need to look at a different approach to financing the, con the constituency councils. And that the, con the, 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 the people's assemblies, I was, I'm sorry, I was on the constituency council for a number of years, I'm sorry. And I enjoyed it to some extent. Um, the, you need then to find some way of the people's assemblies to be financing themselves in some form or fashion. And for instance, you talked about giving licenses um, for vendors. If there, is there a fee that's going to be allocated when a person is applying for a license, will they have to be paying for, uh, paying for it in some form or fashion? And if so, can that, is there any way that the, the assembly itself can have some level of income generation and that the, at the, that the chairman's caucus, that the, the budget of the people assemblies would be established and forwarded to cabinet, to, to, to parliament, so that you know what each, each assembly really needs and not so that there's an equitable dis distribution of resources for the management and development of the area. I think that that, that that is only fair. But if you're just talking about giving equal amounts, it, it really might not end up with so, any real development at all, any real growth at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nalita, I see you, you are coming with some really um, 
novel ideas, interesting ideas. Uh, the idea of the chairman's caucus meeting and themselves establishing the relative budgets of the assemblies, very interesting. Uh, I think th these are things that we're going to have to think about, and this is what the process is. People put ideas. Um, we, didn't, we, we never contemplated that, but it's, it's, it's a new idea that um, we, can, we can consider. Um, but we are, we are conscious that, you know, we live in times of severe budgetary constraints. There's not a lot of money, and we are very conscious that um, whatever we establish has to be very, very um, cost efficient. And um, so we, we, are keeping that, we are keeping that in mind. We, we don't propose to establish a new tier of government that is going to be burdensome on the Barbadian taxpayer. So we can assure the country that we are very, very conscious of that. Um, we know that uh, many of the functions that the People's Assemblies are going to undertake will really be functions where they engage with existing government agencies to ensure um, greater efficiency and, and expedition and accountability in, in providing their services. We do envisage that there will be some areas where the local, uh, the People's Assembly will we'll have a budget to do autonomous, autonomous things, but um, we, are, we are very conscious that we need to keep all of that within very manageable um, proportions. I also want to suggest that the, the chairman's caucus be a standing, everything else can be voluntary, but the chairman caucus, because you need some level of administration, that the chairman's caucus, as, a, as an institution of the assembly, that that chairman caucus should be staffed and, and be financed to be able to, to perform its function when, once that function is properly defined in some form or fashion. Um, we, we envisage that um, the Ministry of People's em Empowerment will play some role, some administrative role in relation to the, the, the system of people's assemblies. And uh, again, you, you introduce a very interesting idea about the Chairman's Caucus having some, some staff um, of its own, uh, I don't think we had we had seen it that way. We felt that we the administrative support we were going to try to get that located in the the Ministry of um, People's Empowerment. Again, very very conscious of the need to keep tight control over over any costs. The other thing that we we have been very clear about is that the assemblyman and assemblywoman will serve on a totally voluntary basis. In other words, you're not going to be paid a, a, a stipend for being an assemblyman or assemblywoman. Yeah. But that is how we feel about it, and we hope that, um, we hope that Barbadians will will endorse that, but it's not, it's not set in stone. You know, it's, it's open for, for debate and discussion. How, I, how do I you see it? How I do you see I, it? I think initially that the assembly members should serve voluntary, mm -hmm. because when you look at stipend, at the end of the day, stipends sometimes turn out to be an embarrassment and it gets you angry. Because you would be, you are, you are given a stipend to sit on the assembly. But if you are working on a specific issue, you might go, you might have to attend 10 meetings in that month to get that, that, that project resolved. You're not going to be paid for each of those meetings. Or you can't possibly be paid for each of those meetings. Yeah? 
So you, if it, or you would bust the budget. So I think that you need to leave it that it is voluntary, and as it develops and it becomes, it, it, it takes greater demand of people's time, that some areas would, would be fi um, given some level of financing, but I think that the, the, it should be voluntary. Because I think that as a country, as a country we have lost that spirit of, 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 of volunteering. And we can't expect everything that we want to be given to us or that we be paid for everything. So I have no problem with that yes. at all. And yet you quite often see that spirit alive and well in people who serve their churches, yes. people who serve various um, service clubs yes. across mm -hmm. Barbados. Yes. So our thinking is if Barbados can generate uh, you know, that kind of person um, in these different areas, why not in serving your own local community yeah, I, I so it's, it's about I, I, fostering that spirit yeah. of service to community and it's not um, unusual our, because people. even with Rotaract, JCI, Kiwanis, you pay a fee to volunteer so the idea that persons would volunteer for free would not be unusual however just to get a few from the audience how many persons think that they even if you're not going to actually be on one of these assemblies, how many persons think it would be a good idea, just by show of hands, to have it initially at least voluntary? Okay, we actually have. And for those who think that there should be a stipend, can you raise your hands? Okay. So we at least have persons where the opinion has been expressed where persons think that it should be voluntary. And I do think that we have a great deal of Barbadians who would be willing to serve their country, given the current circumstances that we are in, to serve their country voluntarily and their communities. Interestingly enough, when we met, and I Sorry, think sir, I can are say there members this. of the commission being paid? Beg your pardon? Are there members of the commission being paid? Not as far as I know. I'm okay. not. No, right. I don't think well, so. Well, I think that you just need to clear that because some people might okay. think as well, oh, yeah, y'all can say what well, y'all like, but no, they're not being told being. Us that, and we, we're no. not motivated by exactly. that. Exactly. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, interestingly enough, when we, met, when we consulted with the trade unions, that was an issue. Uh, there is some uh, modesty here about it, but some persons in that gathering felt that they should be paid. Uh, so there was the reference to the fact of course that if a person has to drive a few miles away from his home, he's going to incur cost. Um, that so actually it, it has come up with the trade unions. That came up as an issue. I'm uh, part of the Institute of Internal Auditors, and that came up when we had our Caribbean forum, where persons, particularly from areas where they have larger travel costs, they asked about being reimbursed for particular expenses they would have incurred on behalf of the chapters. So that may be something to take into consideration where you have an already pre-approved idea of if you incur a particular cost, you may be reimbursed. But again, that's something you would take into consideration because at the same time, even though it's a voluntary effort, you would not want that person to incur significant costs and they're not comfortable or know that they might be able to be reimbursed. But it would have yeah. to definitely be something that's you know, discussed and not that a person takes it on themselves to incur a cost and then expects the commission to reimburse them. You know, Crystal, we could, we could possibly look at um, providing certain benefits for mm -hmm. assembly men and women. For example, that an assembly man or, or woman we tra travel free on, on the public um, the tra transport. So, you know, so I think there are ways and means that we could try to... Non-monetary benefits. Try to incentivize and, 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 and address those concerns mm -hmm. within the context of our own Barbadian reality, in a cl including our fiscal, our fiscal reality. I just wanted to make a point on that in that um, some people may not have a problem with no stipend, but then some people may not be motivated to come. <laughs> and then, as you said, the people who have the cost, who have to incur the cost where they have high fuel bills and stuff like that, 
you will still need something to offset to sit to, to encourage the person to if not you might be coming people you will be upsetting people and people are not coming because you know what I can't get there I can't afford it you know and it's reality in that because of the high cost of living you really can't afford it yeah so that could be taken into consideration you just just bear in mind that you know the assembly is going to be in your local in yeah. your local area. So, so someone in St. You know, Michael should not be traveling to St. Lucie. Going, are going to be minimal, you know? Um, yeah, but we, we are very conscious that we, we exist in a particular fiscal reality in Barbados, and, you know, we have to be conscious of that. Hello, good night to the commission. Good night, everyone. Um, good night. My name is George Gill. I'm here as a private citizen. I'm um, just talking on to that last point. Um, I just want to highlight, um, just ask Ms. Ford a question here. And she talked about, well, she talked about the, um, her many years in service. Um, I, I'm for the volunteerism. I believe that there should be uh, some quantities as dictated here by what you all put forward, um, uh, some financing for the actual physical work that needs to be carried out. You have um, certain aspects here with regards to um, uh, sanitation and road works, uh, road repairs committee and those kind of things. I believe if you're going to try to uh, engage and it seems from what you're trying to do is expand the network of participation um, uh, within Barbadian community. I believe that what you're trying to do is uh, to get an all hands on deck kind of attitude. Um, I sense that from your uh, inclusion of uh, genders, school communities, UE, um, SJP, all that um, and I really appreciate that especially and I really appreciate your involvement of a youth sector because it will not be sustainable unless you are able to have um, if you are not already growing that next generation of people that learn what the what a civic duty means um, it will affect their value system because what we're talking about here is really an issue of the value system you know all that is uh, right or wrong with Barbados is all connected to our value system and how we choose to enact our daily lives here um, whether we go and clean up our our street, our, our, you know, the, the drain that we all know blocks up when it rains heavily or, or you know, clean a community pasture. So uh, it seems as if this, all of this is definitely on the, the right path. I'm all for it. Um, I think, um, as you were saying, they could have started this, for me, decades ago, 10 years ago, uh, five years ago, yesterday. Um, so I'm all for it. And um, I'm just going to go through. I've only got a chance to read this tonight. So I've uh, made some notes here. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight this one point um, with regards to what you just said, and you hit it the nail on the head. All of this is um, community-based and localized actions in which you're really not going that far um, as far as movement. Um, I was just in the Bush Hall area at the Bush Hall Resource Center just up to last night, and it's always heartwarming to see that um, regardless of how we may call the situation um, with regards to maybe people not being as interested and of donate. There, there are still a high, a, a high enough percentage of people in Barbados that do want to do well by the country, their community, and so on. So I don't think we should, I think we should, uh, I think they, they, they call it switch the narrative and, uh, and call it in a different light. You know, it's not we're losing the game, we have a game to win. Um, so uh, with that, I just want to highlight that last year um, for the, 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 the cost of fuel cost and obviously telephone for communications. Um, last year, a, a, a local company uh, raised, a, well, sold $29 million worth of a product to give $100,000 of, of, um, of funds raised to the QEH. So it's not as if we couldn't also incorporate, and I believe if, by, if, if the citizenry um, step up and step forward, there can be also a, a role to play for you know, private-public partnerships where different communities are able to call on the, pub, the private sector for certain uh, contributions and stuff that can help shore up those efforts by those individuals. Because after all, you're still looking at 620 individuals that are now being um, engaged to take on the, uh, the work, the responsibilities of their neighborhoods, which is 285,000 people plus the tourists that we host every year, and not to mention that next year is the big gathering, right? Um, so uh, everything that we need to do has to be done at a certain pace. Um, I just wanted to say that I believe uh, in your first page here with regards to assert and insist upon a greater measure of accountability in our national governance 
um, which is point one and two and point three, which is take active measures to ensure that high standards are always upheld in our national public sector. Um, I still believe that that, that may be, uh, I, I put it here on my paper as a lower order priority because that is what the members of parliament are there for. I believe that that's what you were elected for and I think that should stay to uh, your level of responsibility, whereas points uh, two, four, five, six, and seven um, certainly filter down as far as engaging more people, participatory form of national community level governance, and um, more readily contribute to our, our creativity, intelligence, and energy to the administration of the public affairs of our country, take collective responsibility for delivering critical services to our own communities. Obviously, that one is a bit half and half because we still rely on uh, Barbados Water Authority, Sanitation Service Authority. These are things that are, you, know, you talk to people who um, uh, suffer from the, the, the lack of uh, service, uh, sanitation service, uh, being president or Barbados Water Authority, you know, it, that's a past their pay grade and dare I say it would be, I think, also above the responsibility levels of something such as um, a people's assembly. Um, I guess it would only be um, an echoing chamber at that point for the things that are already no. Rem amiss. No, but what, what we are envisaging is that out of the total pool of assemblymen and women, that various oversight committees will be put in place and that various protocols, rules and regulations will be established so that if, for example, the assembly is receiving complaints about the amount of time that people have to wait in the casualty, QH casualty, for example, before they are treated or inordinate water outages in, in, in a particular area, the, over, the particular oversight committee will, by law, have the right to demand a meeting with the, the, the management of the particular government entity to bring to its attention the complaints of the people um, to demand um, solutions. Right. Just, I, just at this point, so, at this point in, in, in 2019, with um, all the, the, the ability that we have to communicate, like I know Barbados Water Authority, all the, the major government departments now have their own Facebook pages on which people can write into. It, that element of it seems to be a doubling of duties. Um, mm -hmm. it, it seems replication at this point. Yeah, but we do, we do know that we, there, there are. The, the, the whole you know, idea we have the call-in programs of which yeah, the, um, the same yeah. authorities also listen yeah, in the on. Idea, the idea is to focus on government agencies that provide critical services for the people. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to focus on those particular departments. For example, Nalita Gajada was saying we should add the judicial system to the list. And I think what she is saying is that we should, we should be concerned about maybe mothers having to go and stand up in the sun at the magistrate's court and wait for hours or sometimes for weeks to get the maintenance payments or the magistrate's court not working properly and maybe you know um, the judicial officer coming at, 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 at 11 o'clock or whatever and um, so she was actually expanding it so right. I think what we are saying is that there should be a role for the people mm -hmm. to hold their state institutions accountable, particularly state institutions that provide critical services for the public. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we are My saying. My concern with that know? is just that I, I don't want to see us reinventing the wheel. Um, this idea of committees, spawning committees, as you have mentioned there, um, the pool of 620 assembly men, women, could be used to establish several oversight and public account uh, accountability committees to carry out the function of overseeing the performance of several government agencies. I would have understood that most of those things should already be in-house. A level of accountability, yes, but if, as a people's assembly, um, if you we all know the concerns which uh, sanitation and water authority being in premise 
um, it, would, it would seek, and then also community um, beautifications and those kind of things of which there are many ways that you just asked um, Mr. Larrier with regards to the, the councils and how they work. I too have lived overseas for quite uh, a, a, a number of years and um, my example is both within um, American context, European and Australia. And it was amazing to see the level, of, the level of organization at which they had to then create public spaces, public spaces that then hosted events. So, you know, I was a cultural ambassador for the Caribbean at the time when I lived overseas. And I was able to participate and represent, you know, Barbados quite strongly. So these are the things that you would want to see happen here that going into a, a, a um, a calendar year like 2020 for all that it means as far as um, Vision 2020, the gathering, you would want that being able to, to hit the ground running and not be finding yourself uh, replicating certain things or elements of, of, of governance that are already there and being able to come down to the level of, of community engagement, um, uh, that ever elusive thing of getting youth participation, youth empowerment. That's why, once again, I'd like to commend the commission on, on the, the the good roadmap for the future by implementing uh, young people. I would say from as, as, as young as they're, if don't, I, let's not discriminate on age when you may have people already 13, 14 years old that may be wanted. There should be some category at which they can at least sit in on meetings, have their participation because by that you're allowing for sustainability for the future. Um, that, you know, the same person who is 14, 15 years old sitting on a meeting now um, will have the ability to then be part of student government when they go to UE or go overseas and build on their, um, you know, studies from having all, all that that um, experience would have done for them. And then in, in closing, I just want to say that for um, the, the Sanitation and Road Repairs Committee, um, I do have a soft spot for the environment and it, w it would be, um, I guess, a suggestion if it would be, could be also be included somewhere uh, the, the word environment as far as not just sanitation and Sanit sanitation is included in the is. schedule and I, I'm sorry to cut you off but we have run out of time okay for Maureen Pollard. Maureen Pollard. We sure we have if Miss Pollard can have a very very quick closing yes. comment right. two quick points one is um, I thought that because of what's happening in terms of disaster and so in the region, that in the same way you had pulled out sanitation and road repairs, that a major head should be on disaster, maybe national security. And that there's a lot of activity to happen at the community level. I know there's DEM, but within communities, there's a lot that needs to be done to prepare ourselves and to be able to respond in the event of disaster. So whereas I see it comes under in a one sentence under the community well-being, I think it deserves um, separate treatment in the same way you did sanitation and road repairs. Okay. And then the last one is kind of tongue in cheek in the same way that you have the youth assemblies, maybe you should have the elders assemblies too, because I think there's a lot of knowledge and experience, particularly of the public sector, among the body of persons who are now retired or who may be not working for various reasons and they can add valuable contribution to what you're doing. Thank you so much, Ms. Pollard. And thank you to everyone here for your contributions, for the time that you took to come out to these town hall meetings for consultation. We definitely appreciate the input. As we would have stated, the current proposal is a draft, but we definitely wanted to make sure that the voice of the people were incorporated before anything was officially launched, as it is something that is for the people. So I will ask you guys, Yes. Please take note of the posters where we would have the other town hall meetings you're all invited to attend. The next one is on November 13th, which is next week at the Darrell Jordan Secondary School in St. Lucie. And then we have one. <laughs> that would be the invitation more than likely for persons who are online listening. To those who are in St. Lucie, you are invited. And if you do not see your community area in the first four, please know that there are more to come. And one will be coming to your area, to your parish, to your community very soon between this year and next year. I will give, yes, soon is very relative, but I will now give the, my colleagues an opportunity to save in one minute, you have one. Are you able to give one minute of closing comments? Yeah. No, 
I would just, I um, just again, just to echo you, we uh, really uh, want to encourage everyone in Barbados to come out. Uh, this, the implementation of a people participatory system of local governance can make all the difference in Barbados. And we are proceeding on the basis that our people have the levels of education, um, intelligence, uh, to, be able to, hand, to be able to do much more in terms of um, handling their own national affairs, being involved in national decision making. So this entire effort is based on an appreciation of the skills the value, the valuableness of the Barbadian people. We have confidence in the worth of our Barbadian people. And we want to construct something that captures that valuableness and worth and allows our people to make the kind of contribution that they are qualified to make to national development in Barbados. Thank you for keeping your comments to under a minute. And thank you again for coming. And I wish you very safe travels as you make your ways home.